This video is by Straight Goods News, sgnews.ca. The government is continuing to set the record for time allocation, as of today, 31 times. In setting the previous record, the Liberal government under Chrétien and Martin used time allocation approximately every 35 days. As you can see, the Harper government is using the same technique almost every week. It's clear abuse of power is given to a government under our parliamentary system, and this is a record no government should be proud of. The government learned much from the Chrétien Liberals, but unfortunately they took exactly the wrong lessons. All of this has accelerated into an increasingly dangerous trend in Canadian politics, in which we see Liberal and Conservative governments stifling debate, muzzling MPs, and running roughshod over the principles of government. I have a second graph here which shows the increased frequency and intensity of the use of these what are draconian methods to shut down debate time and time again by this government. And you can see already this government has used this technique far more at a far faster pace than any government in Canadian history. This government is plagued by scandal. They've lost three ministers in the last year due to serious ethical breaches. Mr. Harper's own cabinet, party and Senate appointees are constantly under investigation. They've told everyone from the Environment Commissioner to the Auditor General to the Parliamentary Budget Officer to pipe down and stand in their place. Two critical roles for all MPs. One is to hold the government to account. The second is to speak up on behalf freely of their constituents. On both of these, Mr. Harper has failed. First, they ignore the voices of the opposition and their own MPs. Second, they stifle attempts by our officers of Parliament to look at the numbers and facts behind the government's laws and budgets. Third, they shut down the ability of parliamentarians to speak by shutting down debate. Three strikes. This isn't a question of right versus left, this is right versus wrong. It's a fundamentally undemocratic approach to government that turns Canadians off and discourages public interest and engagement in the affairs of the nation. With respect to Mr. Warawa, I've spoken to you and I've spoken in the House about, while I disagree fundamentally with his position on a woman's right to choose, I do support the fact that he should have the right to raise the issue. Uh, our members of Parliament honestly haven't expressed the need to me or to others to, to get to their feet because for us the issue is absolutely clear. The, the system we use is to pass statements through members at a, an ordered way so everyone has an equal opportunity. And the statements that were read out in the House today, I heard them the, for the first time at the same time that you did in the public. This is, this is an absolute uh, scandalous approach to governing. After months and months of delays, many months of delays, the government finally brings a bill in but then shows it to its own uh, caucus first, which is a breach of the rules that govern this place. Mr. Harris was up also uh, defending our, our rights and privileges as members of Parliament to see the bill the first time everybody else does. Obviously the Conservative caucus was given, uh, if not copies of the bill, then certainly the details of the bill. They found problems with the legislation and now the minister has pulled it back off the table. So he must have spoken in detail in order for them to have such a problem with the legislation. There's no way it was a, a vague 50,000 foot view of, of the work because that's been clear for a long time. What do you make of the fact that they, whatever, however detailed the heads up they were given on the bill, the same sort of heads up wasn't given to the chief electoral officer? It's, well, it's, 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 a, it's a democratic sham is what it is. That is somewhat ironic. A, a bill about approving our electoral system was, was presented in such an undemocratic way that the people most concerned with this, which would be all members of parliament and the public, should have heard about it at the same time. That is the rules of this place. Now, key folks that should be involved and in chief of electoral of, of our elections uh, certainly should be somebody that would have been intimately consulted with this. But, I mean, this is the pattern from this conservative government. Time and time again, the, the arrogance and entitlement, the abuse of power that we're talking about here today just seems to be the only way they know, and we've got to do better. We Canadians just certainly it's, deserve better. It's been a better. steady erosion of discipline and any coherence from this government. They're obviously out of steam. We have six out of the next sitting days or opposition days. This government has got nothing left in the tank, no ideas to present to Canadians, and are simply trying to run out the clock. No, no, no. The opposition days are obviously metered out over the course of a session. The only reason a government ramps them all up at the beginning is so that they can get out of school early and we think that's reprehensible and it shows again that this government has just lost its way and lost its ideas. Yeah, but again, the, the, once you clear those things out, the Budget Implementation Act is usually an enormous a Trojan horse that these guys bring in. We'll see. But the fact that they put, I've never seen a calendar like it, I'm not sure if you have, where all of a sudden at the beginning of a sitting, everything's crammed in so that the government can scoot out of town as soon as humanly possible. Merci beaucoup tout le monde.